This week on Crossfeed. Can a Hollywood role send you to hell? Is Jesus repulsive? How many religions can you profess? Are you offended by a green little pig? And a journalist sentenced to death for offending Islam. Ooh, you sure we want to do this episode? We have been there. Everybody, I'm Dr. Jim Butler out here in beautiful uh, Boston, Massachusetts. We are awaiting our Patriots to do 19 and 0 through the Super Bowl this Sunday. <laughs> and I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa, who's also planning on watching the Super Bowl, but fast forwarding through the game and just watching the commercials <laughs> and the um, the the half the halftime program because they got Tom Petty. So, um, welcome everybody to CrossFeed Religious News. Oh, hey, Dale. I hope you're having a good week this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having a real good week. I, I have a follow up to last week's story, though. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, t- I talked about the mouse last week that yes. climbed into yes. the, the trap and that. All right. Well, I, you know, I got that mouse, but then I was down in the pantry. I saw another one just out of the corner of my eye, but I could tell it was, it was a small one again. So I'm like, ah, man. So, all right, so I had this plan, all right? My wife made up this uh, casserole that had uh, Velveeta cheese cubed up in it, and one of the pieces didn't make it. It was sitting on the counter. It was starting to get dried out, and I was just going to throw it away, and then I thought, wait a minute. I've got this um, this trap. It's a lot like the other ones I was using, but it's made by Victor, and it's got a the, – the tongue that sticks out of it is is just a metal thing, and it's it's real thin. And so I took this cheese cube of Velveeta stuff – and I stuck it onto the um, the this tongue of the trap and, and like attached it to it, so it was on there real good. So I figured, oh, if this thing starts messing around with the with that cheese, it'll definitely set off the trap. All right, so I set it down there, went to bed, got up this morning, and the trap is gone. Get away! Get away! <laughs> like I have no idea where it is. Is the, the, I mean, <laughs> but I do have a theory. You see, I set up a, uh, a, a motion camera thing yeah. to snap a picture. Check it out. Here I come to save the day. <laughs> it's Mighty Mouse. <laughs> so, I, you know, now I know what happened to my mouse trap. <laughs> now that's comedy. Yeah, now we know. So, otherwise I'm stumped. <laughs> Don't know where to begin. Well, let's, let's since you're talking about mice, let's stick with animals here. Let's go talk okay. about the three little pigs. All right. Uh, let's see. Now, this is one of right, these... There's someone in my head, but it's not me. Uh, it's, this is hypersensitivity. Mm-hmm. So a children's story based on the tale of the three little pigs was rejected for the ward after the judges became concerned that it would offend Muslims. Uh, it was called the Three Little Cowboy Builders, and it was also criticized because it might offend construction workers. Oh man. Okay. Have you ever, you know, read this story and and said, Oh yeah, construction workers are pigs. <laughs> no, okay. I can almost understand the offending Muslims thing, since Muslims like Jews don't eat pork. So, you know, and th- at that point, Making drawing that you know using a a pig to illustrate uh, a Muslim, um, I, I I suppose you know because pigs are a, a very negative thing in, in their society. Yeah, but um, but it's not. But I, I but it's not symbolizing Muslims. No, it's they're construction workers. It's symbolizing the the construction. But they're not even that. The, these guys built their houses for themselves. I mean, 
My father-in-law so. is a construction worker. He drove, he did heavy uh, construction, did bulldozers. Our brother-in-law is a carpenter. They read the three little pigs to my wife when she was growing up, I and mean, they were never offended by it. This, this is so silly. <laughs> now, it's important with this to, um, oh, you know, I got the wrong story up. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, here we go. That's the right one. Um, I can manage the whole lot. But the, uh, they said that it wasn't the the sort of offensiveness wasn't the only thing that there were other things that they didn't like about the story, but um, that even to suggest that a story about walking talking pigs um, could be offensive to Muslims, it's like, come on! I mean, in that case, just don't read the story. So, so I'm thinking then, you know, you've got, well, Goldilocks and the Three Bears going to offend um, people from Chicago. And, uh, you know, I mean, what other, what other stories do we have of animated, uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, what's the word, anthropomorphic animals? You know, we can pretty much just throw away Aesop's fables, you know. <laughs> uh, throw away, and, uh, uh not every, you know, majority of fairy tales. Uh, throw away the funny animal comics. Throw away Show the Jew down the way. All kinds of stuff. You know, it's just, it's just, there's all just all kinds of things there that, that, that and also, I hit what my, and if you look at the the the, uh, the comments, there's a, a Muslim Muhammad on there said this is only offensive for about one or two percent of the Muslims. You know, I mean, he's like. I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta work to be offended at something like this. Yeah, yeah, you really do. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I've heard the arguments about, um, like, for instance, the um, the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, and and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I would I personally think that the Notre Dame fighting Irish is more offensive than the Kansas City Chiefs, but that's just my opinion. Um, but, you know, for this, it's it's just talking about pigs building, you know. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, next you're going to have Greenpeace involved saying, wolves are endangered, so <laughs> they're, and they, they killed the wolf. <laughs> Spoiler, if anybody hasn't read the story. <laughs> A P-I-G pig. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of a, it, it's just a silly, silly thing there. It, I don't know. I mean, it, it seems to me there are there are other things to be worried about in our world and worried about in society, and that's probably not one of them. Mm hmm So, I don't know. Anybody out there offended by, I see, I, I, I think there's a, there's a whole lot more. Um, you know, just looking at fairy tales and stuff like that. Uh, you want to get offended, read the original versions of a lot of the movies that, or the stories that were made into Disney movies. Or for that matter, look at the Disney version. I think I've mentioned this on, an, on another episode probably, but, uh, like The Little Mermaid. That is, um, the, I, I consider the Disney version extremely offensive because they changed the ending. In the original, she she dies. You know the moral of the story: listen to your parents. And um, and but in this one, she she goes against her parents. Says, "Dad, you don't know what you're talking about." And you know, I'm I I'm a headstrong teenager that knows exactly what I need for my life, and it all works out for her. So, like, hmm, what's the moral of this story? So I find that much more offensive than the three little pigs. I think we had a bad influence on her. Oh, in other words, you want to see Maldi Ma uh, kids get killed. Is that it? Prepare to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long as see, then I'd be clear. much happier about. <laughs> then I'd be much happier about my daughter watching it. You know. 
hey, you listen to me. I know what I'm talking about, you know? I am your father. So, but speaking of offended Muslims, we have a uh, Muslim teenager who uh, complained to the graduation ceremonies committee um, in Louisville, Kentucky, that Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father are repulsive to him because and uh, the a federal judge granted a temporary restraining order prohibiting a prayer from being said during graduation ceremonies at an area high school and the ACLU is there to um, to voice support for this for the Muslim not the prayer yeah, this is a highly biased uh, store of sight here <laughs> I, yeah I, this is how the Muslims take over the world. I mean, uh, his name is uh, Arishaya Syed, and um, it's her name actually is female. Um, and she was working on planes to sell money. She was working with, with others. And uh, terms like Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. I talked about the fact that I was a Muslim, and the prayers in the and the prayers in the past were offensive to me. Um, help! Help! I'm being repressed! I'm not sure where the term repulsive came from, because in the original article that they cite, uh, it doesn't, uh, and I'm trying to find that term. Concentrate, Pinky, concentrate! But, if you ask me, she's, you know, well within her rights here. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, this is a, 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 an interreligious group. Um, the, 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 the site that this, this news by us is, this is a Judeo-Christian nation, and if they're offended, they can die the real talk. i got news for you. Talking about Jesus in a prayer is also offensive to the Jews, too. I think they're part mm-hmm. of the Judeo. Yeah. Yeah, they would, they would be offended by saying Jesus Christ <laughs> or praying to Jesus. So, yeah. I, you know... I, I do remember uh, when I first got to seminary, my first class uh, that I went to, and uh, the it was it was actually it was a Old Testament uh, class before it was one of it was one of the pre sem classes that uh, that I needed to take, and so the uh, it was a grad student that was teaching the class, and. He starts out with the class with prayer. And my first reaction, having been a, you know, going to the University of Wisconsin, my first reaction, I'm like, can you do that? Like, oh yeah, <laughs> Lutheran seminary. Yeah, I guess that's all right. <laughs> you know, but because I, I mean, I grew up in public schools all the way. And, um, so, you know, it was, it was kind of a culture shock to me to all of a sudden be at a Christian school. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of the guys there that had gone to, uh, to, you know, Christian colleges and all that stuff, you know, just took it for granted. But for me, it was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't do that. But yeah, you know, if it's not a, if it's not a Christian school, you know, and I, I think I told this story in a, um, in an earlier episode, but, uh, if you haven't heard it, uh, there some, it was actually the wife of one of my classmates at the seminary was graduating from a, uh, a community college and one of her classmates really wanted to have a prayer at the graduation ceremony. And so they petitioned for this prayer and they, uh, they got enough people that said, yeah, we want this. And so then they, they, their petition was granted, and and so they started out the prayer to Jesus, God, and Allah. Or no, no, I'm sorry, to Yahweh, God, and Allah. Mm. So in doing so, they managed to offend everybody there. <laughs> they were they were equal opportunity offenders because the Jews would object to saying Yahweh, which and that was supposed to be for them. And all three of them would object to um, to their gods being combined with all the other gods there and, and being treated as the same god. 
So, like, <laughs> well, careful what you wish for. I mean, well, I, I, I think in this case, I think the a ACLU is probably right. Just do it outside. Make sure it's not state sponsored. I mean, the other uh, the other thing is um, this prayer. I couldn't even think of what in the world the school is doing in approving this because the prayers are, are you know, the courts have said again and again this is illegal to do this. It's but, in Kentucky. Yeah, I guess. Okay, but um, uh, I mean, the federal judge should have just, you know, restrained it just out of the Supreme Court says you don't do this, period. You know, here it is. But in the court, this, the court case that came up to the Supreme Court, it was a prayer that was kind of like it was it was by a female rabbi reform rabbi and it was just like hey you up there you know dear god you know we, we all come before you right now um and it was just i just sat there and said you know this this thing's so innocuous it's offensive you know it's kind of <laughs> you know it's just like you know whoever it is up there we, we're praying to you <laughs> and hello Anybody up there? <laughs> yeah, and that, that just kind of thing. It's interesting, by the way, that this woman, this, 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 this Muslim girl, Syed, said she would favor a moment of silence. Sure. You know, it's but, non, what do you call that? Nonpartisan or not, not nonpartisan? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, non sectarian. There you go. That's the word. And Sorry, actually, too much up here in liberal Massachusetts, uh, our schools have a moment of silence every day. They do. Yes, every day they have a, a moment of silence to begin the um, to begin the day. Uh, it's one full minute. Uh, right after their announcement time, they have a, a one minute of silence, and uh, you can pray, you can tap your feet, you can you know you you can just sit there and twiddle your thumbs. It's your time to do whatever. Hmm. But that way you're completely non sectarian. That's a good deal. Teachers probably appreciate a moment of silence before the chaos of the day. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and on Monday we're going to have they're going to have two of those, of course. One for God, and the other to remember the New York Giants. So you know we. Uh, <sighs> so we're going to do it twice. Yeah. Actually, my prediction is it's going to be a very close game. I think it's going to be like thirty-eight, thirty-five. Yeah. So anyway, I I don't know. I went I, I I just read through this original article again. And I can't find any place where the term repulsive is used in it. Yeah. And so I don't know. Well, she, she I, said it, I read it, but I can't term, remember it. Yeah, she used the term offensive. Which, okay. I mean, yeah. You know, this there's a difference. I mean, in the in the first story we dealt with with the three little pigs, I think you're going you're being hypersensitive. Nobody mm -hmm. even registered any objection. Nobody said they had a problem. But there's this, this I think, almost a hypersensitivity. Here, I think there's, there's, there's an, should be an appropriate sensitivity to say, okay, we have a, a you know people in this in here who are not Christian. Um, you know, we should not try to you know force them to act as if they are. Well, yeah, and you know that's the thing. If you you kind of force this on people, and it's just hypocrisy. It's not like by saying a prayer that all that it's it's not like a, some a proclamation of the gospel or something, you know, which doesn't belong in that setting anyway. It's just going to turn people off to Christianity. But you know, even if if you thought that it would be, um, or if you, I suppose you could word it that way, um, you know, there are better ways to get the message of God's love to people than to force it down their throats at a graduation ceremony. So. Yes, there are. So, well, we've got another story about offended Muslims. <laughs> you know, I was looking at this, like almost every one of them is about offended Muslims. Three or three of the five. That's just kind of how it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think there was a couple more that I skipped over. Well, okay, okay. We had... Theoretically, theoretically offended Muslims. No, no proof that actually any were offended. Then we had okay. um, an actually offended Muslim who handled it, I think, in a very appropriate way. Mm -hmm. 
And then we get the Nut Squad. <laughs> Which just happens to be the Afghanistani government. Well, or at least some judges. There's a three-judge panel. And, you know... And this is... You know, I don't know. I mean, because I'm, I'm, I'm a freedom of the press person here. But this Afghan journalist... Um, distributed an article, which was written by his brother, about abuses by some of the warlords in Afghanistan. And the three-judge panel um, has condemned him to death uh, for saying um, the uh, article humiliated Islam. This is madness. Yeah. Now, I haven't seen the original article. No, it's not up here. There's no link to it. It's nothing. No, and and if if it is anywhere, it's probably in Arabic. Um, so, <laughs> you know what this really reminds me of is uh, the Reformation, where Luther is basically wants to talk about, hey, there's some abuses going on that that we need to discuss here, and uh, and all of a sudden they're going, ah, he's uh, he's kind of Martin Luther, the German Huss. Referring to John Huss, who was uh, burned at the stake, and um, <laughs> you know they're going, oh, yeah, your clock's ticking on you, buddy," and and so it's the same kind of thing here. And but in this case, it's not that he was necessarily insulting Islam; he was just insulting some Muslims, and not so much insulting him as just saying, "Hey, there's some stuff going on here that shouldn't be going on." So it's it's almost like ah, we just need an excuse to shut this guy up. And so we'll say, oh, he offended Islam. It's uh, yeah, it's blasphemy. And uh, unlike England, <laughs> uh, in Afghanistan, blasphemy is a capital offense. Tough them, boys. We're putting this dirt bag away. Oh, yep. I'll be back on the street in 24 hours. We're trying to make it 12. So, yeah, aren't, aren't you glad that we got the, the Taliban government out of there? To, to give them all this freedom. <laughs> Don't lecture me about war. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? So, yeah, I haven't heard how it's uh, how it's turning out or whatever. Um, you know, I, I would think, since this has made world news, that if, you know, if, if they actually go through with it, there's going to be a bit of an outcry about it. So maybe they can be, you know, convinced, hey, um, you know, this is really not the way you want to handle things. We can hope. So, kind of, yeah. Of course, they can choose to say, mm, yeah, it is. <laughs> you are ugly when you're angry. That's true. But it is a rather it's a sad thing. I, again, I know, again... I always wind up being so thankful for our country. Yeah. Because while we may have our problems, we can talk about our problems. We can complain about our problems. We can, you know, you know say whatever we want. And nobody's going to say anything yep. to us about it. Uh, yeah, okay, you don't want to be purposely offensive, hopefully. But, you know, you can, there's a lot, we have so much freedom. You know, as a, as a as a as a nation, and it and it just amazes me, and especially and, you know when I read something like this, and you know, there's something that we would we would you know tell the guy grid a life if he, they tried pulling that kind of stuff on us, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But over there, it's just take it, get used to it, deal with it. Tack, this is Crystal Palace. Saint Norad has declared DEFCON three. Scramble over aircraft. I had a. Very interesting talk with my oldest daughter this week. Um, uh, maybe it was last week. Anyway, it was within the past week. Um, she's trying to decide what to do with her summer. Um, if, you know, last, last, uh, summer she went touring, uh, with the Drum and Bugle Corps. And it, I mean, it ate up most of her summer this year. Uh, we've seen the schedule and it's pretty much her whole summer. I mean, she'll, the, the championships are the week before she will probably go back to school. So, and, I mean, practices start um, in, like, t two weeks. So, 
you know, she's trying to decide what to do because she's got a, a few other options this summer and, um, she's, she's kind of frustrated, you know, having to, to make these decisions. And, and I said, well, you know, you've got this freedom, you have the right to choose and, and we're not going to tell you how to choose whatever you choose, you know, it's up to you and, and you have this freedom, but then if things don't go the way you want them to, then, you know, you end up bearing the responsibility for those decisions. And so, I mean, that's one thing, you know, on, on the one hand, we're very thankful for the freedom that we have, but at the same time, we need to understand that the more freedom you have, the more responsibility that you have. Are you incapable of restraining yourself, or do you take pride in being an insufferable know-it-all? Uh, oh, I guess we can paraphrase Spider-Man. With great freedom comes great responsibility. There you go. <laughs> well, freedom is a kind of power. You oh, know, well... I wonder if that would offend any Muslim because Stanley was a Jew. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Or, why just be Muslim or Jewish or Christian? Why not be everything? There you go. And, um, yeah, this is, this is a, an interesting little case here, because I the court ruled absolutely correct. Uh, there's a guy in, um, up in Washington State. He's in state prison. And, uh, he says he's a Seventh-day Adventist. And he's into Native American, um, Nature religions. Um, so, in other words, apparently he's a Seventh-day Adventist and a pagan at the same time. Uh, at least, uh, you know, at least there's a variety. Um, <laughs> it's what we call uh, syncretism. It's taking uh, two different religions and mixing them together. Um, very popular throughout history. Uh, a lot of, uh, one of my favorite examples is voodoo that borrows from Roman Catholicism and, uh, animism and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, so the guy, not, um, that's not an endorsement by the way. Oh, okay. Just... <laughs> Thank you for sharing. But, um, you know, what's, what's interesting about it is this, um, yeah, you know, the government says, this is what I want to do. And the government's go, Okay. Do what you want. We don't care. Which is exactly what the mm -hmm. government should say. Uh, however, a Roman Catholic priest resigned as chaplain because he said, um, I can't minister to someone who's ca who claims to be Catholic and pagan at the same time. I got a bad feeling about this. Also, there's more pagans there than there are Catholics. Um, there's 5,500 Protestants, 2,000 nothings, 1,800 pagans, and 1,500 Catholics. And 1,200 Native Americans, uh, religions. Although that's also a pagan religion. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of interesting that the guy, you know, the government's absolutely right. Hey, you, you do what you want. This is, this is none of our, 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 pin, our bother. It's not a, anything that we're going to care about one way or the other. You do whatever you feel like. Mm hmm So, now Jim, yeah. as a jail chaplain. Yes, which I will um, be going to tomorrow, actually. Okay. Now, I'm sure that not everybody that you deal with is a Missouri Synod Lutheran. No, it is I certainly not. hope that. Man, we would look bad, huh? <laughs> but a lot of So, I mean, you minister to, to people that are Christian and I imagine non-Christian. Yes. Yeah, all the, you know, all the time. Um, and I, you know, seek to bring them uh, comfort and, and, and things and the best I can. Um, <clears throat> now, why? No, but of course, I don't do things like uh, do do take part in anything like communion or anything like that. Uh, as a, the, the Catholic, the, the Catholic chaplain, uh, Father Bob, he does. So he gathers all the Catholics together and they celebrate Mass. So I would imagine that would probably be an issue for him, and be an, you know, be an yeah, issue for this Catholic chaplain if you have the guy saying. Yes, I'm Catholic, and by the way, I also happen to be pagan. Uh, he's going to have... Yeah, you know, but he's not Catholic, though. He's Native a, American and Seventh-day Adventist. Right. Although the Catholic so, chaplain says he couldn't do it to be, you know, to be Catholic and uh, pagan, so... Uh, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I could care so about... I, I, 
you know, for I, you know, I can understand if <laughs> if the guy were you know were saying oh, I'm a Roman Catholic and a pagan and I want to celebrate the mass, and I could see him going, ah, hold on a minute here, you you can't really be both, right. um, and and celebrate the mass. Now I can still minister to you, um, you know, as a as a human being and and help you to work through um, your religious understandings. Um, your religious confusion here. Yeah. And, you know, especially if they, if they claim to be a member of this guy's religion, that would be one thing. But he doesn't. I mean, he's saying that he's Seventh-day Adventist and Native American. Now, so... If a guy came to me and said, you know, um, yeah, I'm... Um, Christian and, and I'm also Buddhist at the same time, you know, I would sit down with him and say, wait a minute, you can't be Christian and Buddhist. Sorry. What you are is Buddhist. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, the, you know the, we, we have this real, you know, basic command about, you know, only one God. I have no other mm -hmm. gods before me. You know, end of story. Well, of course, with Buddhism... Buddhism doesn't necessarily claim a god. No, but it Buddhism claims is, righteousness. It, well, yeah. So that, there's a basic conflict right there. Um, you know, or saying I'm Native American. I'm, I'm into I'm into worshiping the, the the cow skulls and into worshiping God. Well, no, you got to be one or the other. And uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 and if you're not exclusively Christian, then you're not Christian. Right. That's what it comes down to. So that's how I would deal with it. Um, you know, I really, think, but the you know the states the, you know, the states right. You you can claim to be whatever you want. Um, that doesn't. That's no big question. I mean, that's that's how the state should look at it. Uh, this is a religious question that the chaplain should sit down. And, you know, that, I have a problem with the chaplain saying, "Well, I can't minister to some guy who claims to be Philip." Well, yes, you can. That's called you know. Discipline that's called instruction, that's called you know things like that. Mm. Uh, because sometimes you people, people don't know. I had a um, found out my uh, the, the organist back at my back at a, my last church. She was a, a, a Roman Catholic girl uh, has become Mormon and. Mm. Uh, started dating this guy and he wanted her to become Mormon and she's like okay and uh, my successor found out about it when she called to resign you know she'd mentioned she was dating this guy and then she called up to resign and say yeah, I, um, I'm becoming I'm joining his church and I'm being baptized as a Mormon and so I really need to go there with him I can't you know keep doing the job and he's like you know, had she said something to him you know couple months before about this guy and I'm thinking about this, he would have sat her down and said look, here's the faith mm -hmm. in which you were baptized you know, here, here's the Battlestar Galactica folks um, you need to decide which, which you want to do but you know you've got yeah, to and but, you know what, she, pastors have the responsibility, especially in a, when you're dealing with a group like the Mormons to say, alright, do you really understand what they believe, what you're getting yourself into right. You know, because I, you know I was at a point in my life where, um, where I was considering Mormonism, uh, when I was in high school and, uh, because I didn't know what they really believed. And I went to talk to my pastor about it and he said, well, you're going to do what you're going to do. That's helpful. He, he didn't help a bit. I mean, it was a Lutheran friend of mine. In fact, uh, Lorraine who won the, the hymnal and she should have it by now, uh, cause I did send it out. Um, goes to the church with the, um, the family that I mentioned when we talked about that. It was, it was that family, um, that talked me out of Mormonism. And, you know, so I, I owe them a lot. Right. Now, I like to think that, you know, once I got into it and realized they believe something very different from what I believe, that um that I would have gone, oh wait, hold on a minute here. Um but you know, brainwashing is a is a tricky thing. So 
Yeah, some people like actually like Windows computers. It's really scary. <laughs> Speaking of really scary and possible brainwashing, let's go talk about... Is that Fred Phelps? No, it's Heath Ledger. Oh. <laughs> so, I, don't, I, I, was, I was debating between these two pictures. I I like the further, the first one, but... So, this, is, this is the movie, Foster. I, 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 I so, know but this is a little better picture. Heath Ledger, who's going to be an absolutely very scary Joker to watch, mm. but you know that could be Fred Phelps. Uh, he's a lot scarier. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, the theme of the movie is why so serious, and Fred Phelps is always serious. Um, seriously. Oh, that's for sure. Um, and so our our good buddy Fred. And his, what, 40 members at the Westboro Baptist Church? <laughs> that are all related to each other. You know, you know it's really, really if, sad. If you ever want an interesting read, there. go to the, read the Wikipedia entry on, um, on the Westboro Baptist Church. Because it talks about their history. It talks about how all these families are kind of intermarried and stuff. And, um, not, not inbred, but, um, they're not, they're only allowed to marry people from their church. Well, when you only have like two or three families, <laughs> that cuts down your options quite a bit. So I thought, I mean, I, I didn't even read the whole article because it's really long. But, um, but it, I mean, I think they did a, a pretty even handed approach. I don't think that, that the people there would, would really argue with anything, you know, that's there. It, it's, it sounds pretty accurate. But I mean, think about it. We have more listeners to our podcast than they have in their church. Anyway. Oh, um, that is scary. <laughs> We actually have more listeners and more viewers, even if you split it in half. So, so anyway, our good buddy... Because we're the uh, voice of reason. <laughs> Any our good buddy Fred down there in Kansas. Oh, I must be said to be a Kansan. Um, he wants to go out and um, protest Heath Ledger's funeral in Australia, which is They've always said different day one. It's going to be a private ceremony uh, because um, I don't know where it's some money to fly to I don't know. Australia. No, he's fly. not. They're they're not protesting the Australia one. They are, if I read it right, they are protesting. Um, there's going to be a memorial service in the United States, and they're going to protest that. Oh, okay. By the way, yeah, they, 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 they. Oh, okay, yeah, they're not. Yeah, okay, not, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, they will pick up Ledger's United States memorial service. Not those held in his native Australia. He, you cannot live in defiance of God, she said. He got on that big screen with a big fat message: "God is a liar, and it's okay to be gay." Okay to be gay. Um, Heath Ledger is now in hell and has begun serving his eternal sentence there. Um, well, okay. As far as I know. Keith Ledger was not Christian, never claimed to be Christian, never claimed any relationship with God. So, to say that he's a little warm right now is probably fair. Um, I mean, saying that, but okay, that's just, you know, that's, that's, that's sin. If so, it's because he is a sinner. Not because he uh, um, advertised a particular sin. Not because he starred in a particular movie. It's because he's fallen short of the glory of God, just like all of us. And it really frustrates me to to read stuff like what the, you know what what, what you know what they say and stuff because I don't know. I just have the idea of Jesus walking around. And hanging around, you know, the prostitutes and the sinners, they would be there screaming and yelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's all about saying, yeah, this is wrong, but this is sin that Jesus died for. So, and see, the thing that gets me about this is singling out homosexuality 
as if it's something that's so much worse than anything else. You know, I'm looking at just about every movie on nowadays has um, people sleeping together that aren't married. and But somehow adultery, heterosexual adultery, as far as Fred Phelps is concerned, is not as sinful as homosexuality. And to which I say, hogwash, they're both damnable. You know, but they're both sins that Jesus died for. Impressive. So I don't see him picketing every other um, Hollywood actor's funeral. You know, let's 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 think of this one out. Right. You know, I mean, and and for that matter, he's he's upset about the fact that he played a homosexual. The, the fact that he played, you know, a psychotic clown, that you know, a murderer. Well, you know, that's that's not such a big deal. Oh, but oh, he played a, a, a homosexual. Oh well, oh well, but, you know, that's that's not inexcusable. Okay. <laughs> I just, I don't get it. Uh, I don't get it either. I never have, and I really, really feel sorry for him because. You know, you and I both know gay people. We both work with them. Yes, I would help them. This is simple. Mm -hmm. But my goal is to bring them to know Jesus. You know, First Corinthians six. It always, you know, always hits me. Paul lists all these things. You know, people aren't going to heaven. Um, and among them, he says, you know, the male prostitutes, the homosexual offenders, and, and all these people are just. And that's what some of you were. But you've been washed, you've been justified, you've been sanctified. You know, the, the people who you know were, 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 were actively homosexual were alive and well in the church. But Paul said, they can be redeemed by Christ's blood. And that's what it comes down to, being redeemed by Christ's blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, do you know that, that they've uh, picketed an uh, appliance store? Because there was, you know, when the the Swedish pastor was uh, w was censured or, or fired or whatever because he was against uh, gay marriage. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, um, because it was the Swedish government that did that, and because this um, this appliance store sold um, some Swedish vacuum cleaners, they picketed the appliance store. <laughs> They probably pick at my wife's Husqvarna uh, Viking sewing machine because it's Swedish made. I bet you they. There you go. I bet you they love IKEA, huh? <laughs> so uh, I just just floors me. I mean, you know, it's like. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, know. Where, where where do you shop without you know? Um, something made in Sweden, <laughs> or, or or made. In a country that um, that 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 hasn't uh, you know spoken out strongly against homosexuality, you find well, me a country like that. Well, I, I'm you know? looking for the stuff that's not made by sinners. Ah, hmm. Now you're getting tricky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we had a uh, an issue up here with a uh, one of our pastors. We had a conference in, uh, up in Stowe, Vermont which is where Ben and Jerry's ice cream is. And I wrote to the guy, you know, I was on the committee and said, here's some things you can do up there, you know, and one of them was take a tour of Ben and Jerry's. And he got all ballistic. Because ben and Jerry's are giving money to this, you know, the, the foundation to give money to this organization that supported homosexuality or abortion or one, something like that. And, you know, how dare I? How dare I? Um, you know, yeah, they're a pretty liberal organization. Oh, yeah, they are. Um, but, you know, how dare I, you know, recommend that people go there? To you know, tour an ice cream factory. It's good ice cream. <laughs> you know, if, you know, if, you know, you know, if, you know he, if he, he had actually typed it out on a, you know, heater on said, do you know what most, you know, yeah, yeah, most computer companies, you know, Give benefits to gay partners. I mean, you know, it's just. Yeah, I think all of them do. Yeah, I mean, what what are you? 
Now, realistically, I mean, you know, what, what are you not going to support? Or what are you not going to buy there? Well, it's it's like boycotting Disney, the Southern Baptist Convention did. My um, is my stepmom did a, a, a she either did a, I think she was reading a grad student's report on that, or or she was taking a class or something like that. But anyway, um. They were looking at all of the companies owned by Disney. And it's like, okay, if you're going to boycott Disney, you, I mean, you can't because they own so much that, you know, trying to, um, trying to, to boycott all these different places is impossible. Inconceivable. Unless you, you know, are going to go live in the woods or something. Oh. We're going to boycott Disney, so can't watch ABC. But NBC's okay. And we can go to Universal right. Studios. That's okay. <laughs> <sighs> I don't get it. But, uh, you know, it's it's not about trying to... Yes, we need to speak out against sin. Mm-hmm. Let's not make one sin greater than another. And let's not try... And, and let's not go out and, you know, attack people. Um, you know... It, I think overall we love people in the kingdom of God. As I look at Jesus' ministry, you know, that's what he did. He tried to love people in the kingdom of God. People nobody else wanted him to deal with. People who were who were deeply ashamed of who they were and deeply ashamed of, of, of their sin. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, if somebody's going to come and get in your face, you, this is what God says. Here it is. You want to know what I think? I'll tell you what I think. Uh, and actually, by the way, I'll tell you exactly what God thinks. But, um, I think at the end of it all, it's up to God. God's judgment, not mine. Mm-hmm. But let's leave it there for the night. Uh, again, thank you all for listening. Uh, now, maybe we've offended you. And you want have got comments for us. It's entirely likely. <laughs> We're pretty equal, offer, all, equal opportunity about it. So yep. you can get a hold of us at podcast at crossfeednews dot com, or if you're or watching you can this it. on iTunes, you can just click the screen right now. It'll take you right back to our feedback page, or you can go yep. to crossfeednews dot com and just fill up the feedback page there. Yep. Or you can call us, and you could be the first caller. You know, I'm on these lists a lot. You know, about comic books and stuff, and it says, uh, you know. People go, first post. Well, you can be the first caller. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we've been doing this for, what, almost two years now. Yep. And we have never had a voicemail. Never. And um, so, yeah, if you want to have the first voicemail, you can call our voicemail line at 206-350-4749 and leave a voicemail. There is a message for you. So, um, oh, we'd like to, oh, I don't have the picture up here. Uh, Need a shout out to our sponsor, pdaperformance.com, maker of fine go. software for uh, palms and the palm system. Yep. yep. And, um, and, and just, I'd like to remind people again that, um, if you see any kind of interesting, uh, religious news, that you can post that to crossfeednews.com. You can go and uh, set up an account, and you can also leave comments there on the stories. Uh, we've had a few comments on um, on some of the stories, uh, not a lot, but we'd love to have some discussions going on there. Um, offer your thoughts on different stories and stuff. I think you know it's really good to to hear back uh, from people and, and to get your opinions. You know, you sit and listen to us, but uh, what do you think? You know, we'd love to hear from you. With that, God bless you all. Have a good Super Bowl weekend. Cheer on the Patriots. If nothing else, it will mess up Boston because there's a big controversy because if they win, the parade's going to be on Tuesday, and that's the day of the primary, and these people might not vote because they're going to go to the Patriots parade. I have to ask. I've been curious about this because, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the Patriots winning is sort of a foregone conclusion, and and so I'm just curious uh, what kind of point spread uh, they're giving the. Uh, I haven't read anybody up here. I haven't really Giants. noticed. Uh, like I said, I think it's going to be a close game myself. 
Yeah, Personally, so. I had two opinions about this. Number one, if you'd rather go to the Patriots than vote, you probably shouldn't be voting anyway. Number two, True. it doesn't really matter because whoever wins the Democratic nomination, whether it be Hillary or Obama or Freddie the Wonder Horse, is going to get a Massachusetts vote. So, was, yeah. <laughs> And number three, you can only vote in a primary if you're actually registered in the party, and 55% of the state is unenrolled. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let them parade. I don't care. <laughs> so, well, we thank you all for listening, and good night, everybody, and God bless. Good night.